Call this meeting to order at 6.32 p.m. We begin with public input. If there's anybody online, I don't think so. We move on to the student report. Sophie, I'll always screw it up, it's okay? Yeah, that's there right. There you go. <laughs> Class of 2024 will present. Go ahead, Sophie. Um, so for some notable academic matters, midterms were last week and the second quarter finished, so now it's third quarter and semester two. Uh, Fine Arts is the middle school musical going on February 1st to the 3rd. And then NE Voices is this Friday. I'm assuming that's an acapella group kind of competition. But um, some notable athletic matters. Girls placed first in the state track relays on Friday. And boys placed fourth for the relays on Friday. And then Unified Bocce Tournament will be Sunday the 28th. Um, so miscellaneous, the rethinking power block process is being piloted right now. So there's some stricter rules ag against uh, leaving without signing out. So I think it's gonna be good for our safety and making sure we know where everybody is, or at least the teachers know where everyone is. But um, Adventure Club is going to ski at Loon Mountain on February 10th. And then the Harvard Model UN trip is Thursday to Sunday this week. And for my student work report, I recently wrote an essay on um, women kind of going against social norms and how that's portrayed in poetry, where women talk about their mental health and certain aspects of the social norms and how they feel about it. And um, I got 100 on it. <laughs> nice. Congrats. Questions? <coughs> only a couple questions do you know what country the model UN team got <laughs> it's on the tip of my tongue because I have a few friends that are in it um, they were Vatican last year I think right uh, I think so they were Vatican but we won the last two years and so they, yeah. when they came here they didn't they weren't know I didn't know okay and then it'll come to me now <laughs> when I go to my car <laughs> I'm like oh I remember but. and then with like so for semesters, like when you get into the older grades, do you have a lot of classes that are one semester or most of them year long? I'm just curious because I don't have any older kids. <laughs> yeah, I think um, all of them are year long when you pass, I guess, freshman seminar. Okay. Um, I know in middle school they like switch every yeah. semester, but all of my classes this year are year long. Are year long, okay. So no changing. Any other questions? No. Nope. Okay. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <coughs> okay. Moving on nice and quick. We have no continued business. We go right to the new business. <coughs> First thing is special town meeting coming up. <coughs> um, as everybody may know, we have a meeting coming up. If you are ha if you do happen to be listening, you should go to it because they need 150 quorum in order to have the meeting. <coughs> the question for here is should we take a vote to recommend or not recommend anything? Mr. McGowan pointed out very astutely that <coughs> agenda items two and three we really shouldn't vote on because we don't have the specific numbers yet. I think he and I have heard some of the things that are going to be in there. So I was thinking that I sort of know what's coming up. But I think we should probably vote to recommend those ones when we hear the numbers because there are amendments to the operating budget and the capital budget that we approved in the last meeting. So right. <coughs> the only other question is on the on the, the main purpose of the special town meeting, which is to acquire property that is adjacent to Ipswich River. I guess the first question is, <clears throat> should we vote to recommend or not recommend? I mean, should we take a vote at all? And then if we take a vote, what, how do we want to vote? So my thought would be <clears throat> a lot of times we don't vote to recommend purchasing property if, if uh, the town does that. My thought on this is I think this property is, is unique because it's adjacent to it's river park and a lot of students a lot of children use the park for sports and other recreational activities i think we there's been talk about an intergen intergenerational community center over there which might have an impact on programming you know either for students or possibly for schools um, in the in the future and so this would just be something that provides that it also impacts us slightly because the buses park at that location right now. So we would have to find a new location potentially in the future. 
And but that's, I just, that's yeah. regardless of, the, of the purchasing Correct. of this property, but yeah. <clears throat> Correct. I mean, it, it, it so, right. And so, um, and then the only, only other thing I would say is overall, when the town spends money from free cash, there's always a question about whether it could be used for something different than that. And so I think the select board would appreciate our, a, a recommendation from us. So I'm inclined to, to take a vote and to recommend and I'm inclined to recommend it, but I don't know if anybody else disagrees or has a different opinion on it. I'm indifferent. Um, I have an opinion. I, I just, um, Go ahead, Noah. I wanted to say I agree with you, Scott. I do think that in this case, it has bearing on um, students, children, and I also do think that for the, um, you know, the purpose of expanding eventually into a um, recreational opportunity that is important. Awesome. Thank, thank, thank you, Noelle. And it goes right along with the green space that we're working on this year, right? <laughs> um, Rich, any thoughts on? Yeah, I, I think we should take the vote. I think it's 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 um, it's uh, it's a little bit borderline, but it definitely impacts the students and the and the children of North Reading, and and ultimately, um, I, I think it makes sense. So. Okay, and so, and, and just curious, is everybody planning on being at the special town meeting? I am unsure. You are unsure? Mm -hmm. I will be there. Okay, and Noelle, will you be able to make it? I don't believe Jeff yes. can make it. You don't think Jeff can make it? I don't believe so. Okay, that won't help me because I was gonna say could, we could vote with Jeff later on if everyone's gonna be there, but we will have a quorum to vote the other ones later. So, that, so if we have four now, we're not sure if we'll have more than three at the meeting, why don't we take I will entertain a motion to recommend Article 1. I move that the committee vote to recommend Article 1 on the uh, warrant for the special town meeting on Tuesday, January 30th. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. So we'll do a roll call vote since we have remote people here. And actually, for the record, Cynthia, we should say we have a remote person. Noelle's remote. Um, Rich? Aye. Diana? Aye. Noelle? I'm an I as well. Passes four to zero. So we will vote to recommend. Moving on, we have the annual report from Seam Collaborative, and we are honored to have the chair of the Seam Collaborative with us today, <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Daly. I think, as always, uh, I like to just share um, some of the great work that they're doing over at Seam. The annual report kind of shows us all of the programs that. Um, that they're offering. Um, we currently have, um, Michael, I believe it's like four students there right now. Is that correct? Yes. What did you say four? It could be growing soon, but yeah. did you say but four? Have, four. Uh, four. Yeah. But they have a uh, great many programs and offerings. Um, and as I always mention, well beyond this, we also have many other uh, pieces there for collaboration, job alikes. We have our shared. DEI position. I'm just going to mute. Um, thank you. Um, we have our shared DEI position. We have our shared UDL position. Uh, and then we also have, um, you know, several other contractual services with SEAM Collaborative. They do a great job keeping us informed of any changes, updates to their budget. Um, and we've worked with them closely on our Title III grant as well. So we don't currently host any programs here as we did in the past, um, and they are currently seeking um, some some new placement for uh, one of their programs in a building that in uh, another district that they're no longer able to stay at. But they um, are very financially sound and uh, offer a lot of great opportunities for for our students. Is is their tuition set by OSD? Where we had the out of district increase last year, or is that separate? no? That's these are not private. These are separate. Are, yeah. Right. So they are considerably under um, the cost of obviously of a private. And that's really the huge advantage of being a member district is to be able to have these opportunities f to us for a fraction of what it would cost <laughs> at a private institution. Okay. I look through the report. Good. Any questions on nope. the annual report? Noel, any questions? I think Dr. Daly muted you, but okay. Yeah, um, 
I have a question. I was I'm giving myself a minute to give some feedback, but, and I keep shaking my head, and of course you guys are not moving on. <laughs> Moving on, Student Opportunity Act Overview. Dr. Daly, you might Thank you. lead us through this. Yeah. So I will share just briefly, <laughs> as, as many of you know, um, there's the Student Opportunity Act, which um, came out a few years ago. The main goal of Student Opportunity Act is to ensure that every student in the Commonwealth has access to a high quality public education reg regardless of the zip code. So as you know, there are two major components. The big work that was done is the changes to the Chapter 70 funding formula. Um, a few years ago, this um, Student Opportunity Act took into account the recommendations of that um, budget overhaul that took uh, many years to, to come up with. Um, and for us, I think we all know that this really did not amount to a huge amount of difference in Chapter 70. Our number is around 70,000. It's about what it was before this. Some districts saw hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars increased. And this is representative of um, our needs as a community and, and the fact that we don't have some of the needs that other towns have in terms of uh, poverty. Um, the policy updates, we need to update the plan every three years. So even though there's not a huge amount of difference, with the, um, the funds that we're getting, they still want us to have a plan with goals based around um, what we're doing in the areas that Student Opportunity Act is hoping to focus upon. So the good news is it's all you know, aligned to the work we're already doing, the goals that we're already working on, but we are up for a, um, a new three-year plan to be introduced this year. And so you know, just a quick overview of the differences. Now, this is not necessarily the district improvement plan in terms of NRPS 2025, but I'm going to speak to them in the same way. This is really, there are some districts that have to develop a district improvement plan to submit to the state. But essentially what they're talking about is that the student opportunity plan is a subset of a larger plan for all students that always is focused on English language learners, students with disabilities, and low income students. So our district improvement plan also um, speaks extensively to those subgroups as well. Um, again, the, the cycle that we're on, we're just we're finishing last year the, um, the, the three-year plan, and we are now starting a new three-year plan that's due in April um, with a spring 2025 and 2026 there will be updates, and then a new plan in 2027. So this is the cycle that we are on at this time. So along with these requirements, they did give us some uh, tools which have been very uh, useful for us. And I'll just show you that um, quickly here. And it's an interactive tool that we have used with our administrators. And this is data that we've seen before in different formats. Um, but sometimes the way they present it and the way it goes visual, I'm sorry, scrolling here, you know, can, can always, you know, you're looking at it through a slightly different lens and it's always kind of interesting. So just to look at, um, here's our district heat map. You can compare it to the state. We can look specifically at English learners and things like chronic absenteeism, um, ninth grade passing rates. We can look at MCAS scores in grades three, six, eight, and 10 for English learners for students with disabilities, for low-income students. And you know, this was one that jumped out at me, like our low-income students are, are quite a bit more likely to be absent than, um, than the all students. You know, and so the, the questions that this helps us look at is you know, what are we doing to help students that are in need? And is there anything in our policies or our practices that um, could be changed in order to address some of these issues that we're looking at. So many of these things are already on our radar, but some of these things um, may be different for us to look at. And so the first step in this was using a tool like this with our administrative team to think about um, you know, what jumps out at us in terms of the data, what was interesting, what surprised us, and how we can use some of this information to develop some questions to try to go deeper into bringing about some positive change. Um, this is where I come in and say, 
with the zero dollars that we're getting to do those things, right? <laughs> and so they, they were quick to tell us at the state level that one of the misconceptions is you only need to do this if you're getting increased funding, which I, I understand, we all are doing it, but I think there are some additional grants that you're eligible for after this that come out. I am going to advocate that not getting any dollars in the initial round of the funding should give you some preference in the grant funding, right? So if we want to apply for a grant to work with, um, you know, I always tried to get, because this was originally supposed to be helping to reduce the kindergarten piece, right? Um, or actually it was for, it was for pre-K, and I remember writing to them saying, well, what if you still have, uh, you don't have universal kindergarten? I think we should get some preferential treatment because we've never received any funding as a result of this formula. That's my argument um, for them to consider. But this data is helpful. Um, another big piece of the puzzle is um, looking at the ways, so this is then you know, some of the, the plan itself, which we're gonna work on, I'm not going to bring through. Um, this is the data tool that I was showing you. Just wanted to share one more piece of it here, which is just you know, the parent engagement and engaging stakeholders. So I'm going to be reaching out to the parent groups that I work with, we're going to have schools talk a little bit with um, some of their school councils to get some data and some information. I'm going to speak to the CPAC. I know Mr. Buckley, I believe you're the liaison there. So we just want to engage um, lots of stakeholders into giving us some ideas for things that we continue, can continue to do to include in our plan. I may have some kind of survey that's sort of wide reaching as well to get some data and information. So our timeline for this is we submit in April. I'm thinking our March um, school committee meeting um, is the one where I would bring it forward here. It does need a, a vote of approval of our plan um, by the school committee. So and, any and questions for <coughs> Who creates the plan from the administration? Is this you or is it Mr. Colleen or? So I would be working on it with my team, yeah. Okay. So I, my goal is that, you know, and I, I said this to the administrative team, we were in this room last week and I said, you know, I could, Sean and I could sit down and just write this, but I want to really hear from everyone. And so we, we had our, our leadership team, our full team in here with all of our assistant principals and coordinators, and we started to dive into the data. And they came up with some, you know, they're always gonna see something we're not gonna see. So I wanna incorporate as much of that into um, our plan as we can. So he and I will be working on it. I'm sure there'll be pieces that Michael will have to help with as well. Um, and we'll bring that together and then we will bring it forward to you um, for, for approval prior to submission. Okay. Any questions? <coughs> nope. nope. Yeah. I guess my only comment was just what you said sort of before trying to align it with 2025 and RPS 2025 and RPS 2030 or whatever it is mm -hmm. because this would obviously go into the next plan year. Exactly. So. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Look forward to seeing the update in March. And then that leads perfectly into NRPS 2025 updates. Great, thank you. Just have a few <laughs> updates for you. Um, are we sharing at home? Let me make sure I'm sharing at home. So just as you know, uh, this is just a mid-year check-in. This is our um, one-page interactive NRPS 2025. What I'm going to do is just click on a few of these elements just to show you um, some of the areas and some of the things I can update you on. Um, under student services, 1.4. For this year, we're talking about um, fully implementing our disabilities awareness program. I think Ms. Koenig gave an update on what we're doing with that program. We're also gonna have a parent uh, piece of that as well that we've talked about. And developing student voice and encouraging students to participate in their own learning. One thing that we've done, uh, and, and Sophie spoke to it a little bit, this update of the power block um, mm -hmm. at the high school. This is a goal that's connected to the administrator goals, school improvement goal, and they also have student members on that, um, they call it the repo team that is meeting. And I'm gonna check in with them and see how that's going on Thursday. But they're, um, I got some feedback from the group that met today of the students for school council and as she said, I think they're all seeing this change as a positive one um, that they're piloting. Similarly though, you know, I think we had some opportunities with the student IDs to get 
more input from students earlier. And so um, I know there's an article coming out in the student uh, literary magazine about communication and more ideas. So it's like some ways we're doing everything right and getting kids involved from the outset. In other ways, communication, you know, so it's, a, it's always a good opportunity for us to look back and say, you know, one of our major goals here is student voice. How are we getting that information um, from our students and to our students? So it's a, it's a continuous cycle um, as well. And as I mentioned just a moment ago with the Student Opportunity Act, um, there are um, great opportunities to get some student voice there as well. Um, under MTSS, we are looking at the school schedules at the middle school and the high school. As I mentioned, looking at Power Block for what's changing with that and how that can uh, be thought of in terms of interventions as well as the middle school intervention block. And it also talks about having an SEL screener, which we are talking about rolling out at the elementary schools. So you heard it during the high school presentation, what they're doing with um, information at the high school level. And the, and the middle school and elementary schools are also going to do this as well. It's going to be something sent home to families. They will have the option to review the questions. They can opt out of whatever um, programs that we're doing. But we are taking those steps um, with that universal screener as well. Under cybersecurity, there have been some policy revisions. I met with Noel and Jeff um, last week. There are many policies we're going to be looking at, but several of the policies that we'll be bringing forward to the next meeting are concerned around data, data privacy. Some of the things Dr. Downs spoke to when he updated us and some other pieces as well. And there are, you know, Dr. Downs also spoke about the parental updates and information about what's happening with student data. Under student health, um, we are working towards the 1.0 adjustment council at every school, but as you know, we were able to add in a position um, at the little school so that we have a 0.4 at the little as well as uh, the existing 1.0 that was split between the buildings. It's sort of amounted to like a 0.7 at two buildings this year. Um, but as we've discussed many times, those are ESSER funded positions. We need to fight for those positions moving forward. Um, we also have added a lead counselor this year. Uh, so similar to our lead nurse position, we have that lead counselor position. And Mr. Javina, who presented um, through the high school, is in that role. And so she's working with Michael Rosa, Cynthia Conant, and our principals to develop those processes for the screeners at the elementary schools, which is great. Um, and also under that is the cell phones grant. So there will be more. Um, we have to submit our first progress report on that coming up. Um, the power block group, a lot of what they're talking about there is cell phone usage, not usage. Um, so there's a piece of it there that I've picked up on. And then we're also doing our own investigation. And I believe Noel wanted to be involved in that group as well. And so there'll be some more coming out on that very soon. Uh, under diversity, equity, inclusion, belonging, we have uh, sort of standards 1.1 and 1.2 talk about um, the walkthroughs process. So we've been doing walkthroughs. Um, everyone has had a goal to have something on the books through January. There's a few that still have them scheduled out, but I know that middle school, high school, and the little school have been, um, are, are already ready to go with high school and middle. I think little school had a, um, a cancellation due to illness, but the, um, the other schools have started their process of doing the walkthroughs with the administrators to understand better what it is we're looking for when we get into a classroom and we want to see um, cultural responsivity. And then the next part of this is helping our teachers understand what we're looking for and then they're modeling it and we're giving them feedback. So it's a two-way conversation. Um, I mentioned last time that we applied again for the diversification grant to hopefully um, continue our work with the diversity of our workforce hiring practices. I'll let you know if we receive that. Um, the climate and culture, um, the restorative practices work that we're doing at all of our schools, but it's, it's really been taking on um, a, a lead at the middle school. They're really working into everything they do um, with staff and students. And the high school is exploring that in depth this year as a part of the goals of their uh, school improvement plan and administrator goals. <coughs> Under teaching and learning, I'm just highlighting um, 1.3, digital learning and technology integration. Dr. Downs is leading some work here on artificial intelligence and virtual reality. And he's been developing his goals about 
what this could look like for our district plan, but then he's also offering some professional development for staff members. Um, and I believe his article that's going to be in the transcript this week um, talks in great detail about what some of those offerings are. Um, they're very interesting, and I believe he is going to be, uh, I'm not sure if he's recording the sessions, but he's definitely, a lot of the materials that he's generating, he's going to be publicizing so people can, can see it. And it's really, really interesting things that are, that are cutting edge. And he's involved in some of the um, state groups and state committees that are looking at digital equity, but also AI and VR and trying to stay on that. So he's synthesizing a lot of the information for us and sharing it out, which is great. Um, just a quick technology infrastructure update, 2.3. We've updated the wireless infrastructure at this building, the middle school and the high school. Um, and we did that work over the summer so that we have our new APs in the buildings um, that are state of the art. And we have interactive whiteboards all at the elementary schools and we're starting to pilot some of the boards that are gonna be used in the middle school and they are just absolutely thrilled so far with, with the technology. I was in the art room at the middle school and um, she loves how interactive it is but just the quality of the picture mm. when you're looking at artwork just the the uh i don't know if it's 4k or whatever but it's just the high definition of the artwork is just you know so much better than the projection systems that we yeah. had and just the technology's come so far in the last 10 years so people are excited about that promise the the whiteboards is part of our capital improvement plan for the future but we're um, testing out which boards we want in a few different spaces and people are very happy with those results. And the elementary teachers are, are very happy as well. And then under 2.4 with course offerings, um, again, we had talked about, um, I'll just show you this one again, just to show you what it looks like. But talking about increasing some of our, our courses here, but identifying um, additional courses in arts. And so, you know, I was very happy when Mr. Um, uh, Lepret was able to present on that Ceramics 2 course, something that had been talked about for quite some time, and obviously building upon that advanced art class that was uh, a goal from last year. So that's just a brief overview of some of the highlights of sort of the work we've done. I think there's other areas where we've got work to do, and um, something may not have started yet that needs to get started. It's always good for us to check in on these goals periodically so that it's not something we open up in June and say, whoops, we never did this, right? So it's, it's, um, it's something that I do routinely with my team when we meet at the schools, when we review their, you know, every time I meet with them, we look at their school improvement plan, their goals, which are all related here. And, you know, really the way these are being achieved is through those goals. There's not, some of this is things that I'm doing myself, um, but most of it is through the action steps that they're taking and the work that we're doing as a district. So I'm not sure if there's any questions, but this is just an overview. Questions? Um, not really. I mean, I, it, it's great to see a lot of work. Oh, I know what. <coughs> the power block pilot, can you just either remind me or tell us, I can't remember if we talked about it before, the, the, what, the, what they're actually looking at and changing or thinking about changing? Sure. So. Um, as written as, as the school improvement goal, you know, we're trying to figure out to, the, the, way, the way I've discussed it with Mr. LaPred is, you know, a lot of schools, when they try to figure out how to address issues like helping all students, right, or students with disabilities, English learners, high needs, low income, kids who are having trouble in school, a lot of the, the you know, they'll do an audit and a study and whatever, and they come up with, we need some kind of power block, right? So we already have it. So the question is, are we using it to its full potential? Are we doing everything that it was intended to be? Is it doing, has it changed over time, right? Some of our staff that have been here for 20 years can talk about how it's changed over time and what it could look like, what could be done differently. Um, so it was a good opportunity for us to go in and look at what time on learning means. You know, it shouldn't be a glorified study period. Although we do think kids need breaks in the day too. And we do, we do agree that kids need um, time to, to you know, have a different lens and to decompress. But certain things count for time and learning and certain things don't. So making sure that it's done um, efficiently. I think power block, from my observation, I see a lot of your higher, higher classes, your APs, sending passes to kids to come down to do some extra help. Are we doing that with all of our classes in the same way? 
right? Are we taking advantage of that time? And what is the process? What is the system? You know, and what is the accountability? Because our kids are great, but when given the choice, sometimes are they going to take that initiative, or sometimes does the, the system need to help drive the process, right? right? So um, I think that's what you heard Sophie saying is like that accountability piece, um, where kids are. And it's obviously for safety as well. She spoke to the safety piece of it right. for making sure everyone's where they need to be and, and what that looks like. And as we look at our safety protocols and processes, making sure it's a tight system, loose but tight, right? Where we want kids to have flexibility, flexible, but, but yet we want them to be accountable. So that's really what that, and so it's driven by a, a volunteered group of teachers that are looking at this, and then also um, some students that are involved in the administration. So I'm excited about it. I would love to see more in terms of the possibility of interventions, like if we've identified kids that need X, how they can make sure they get there, even beyond just a teacher calling them down for extra help or to make up an assignment or an assessment. Um, but that's sort of down the road. And so I see this in multiple phases over time. But it's great that we're having the conversation. So. You think students look at Power Block as a, as a <clears throat> lighter period, a free, like a relaxing period? Or, or I think for some, I think it's different for different students and what sure. it's for. And again, we value that. But there's also some ambiguity about sometimes does a club run or sometimes right. is it time to go to the library and who can get to the library and how many kids can go there and um you know what can happen during that time we do have one maybe sometimes more classes that run during that period and the question of what does that look like and is you know i think band running during that time makes it possible to do a lot of what we do with the band right that if that had to be after school you'd lose a certain amount of flexibility but on the other hand you know we can't really be running a lot of classes during that period so right. there's lots of different things that we've been looking at um, from that group so I kind of meet regularly with Mr. LaPrette to review the updates on it but I am excited to um, this week check in with the group and just hear from them directly on, on what's coming but they they rolled out this pilot along with the ro the the new quarter starting and all that and so um, you know, everyone's it's sort of a buzz right now. It's a good thing, though. I think everyone, I think everyone wants to see something a little bit um, different. You know, we can always improve. So, I, mean, I think, I think, depending on the students, I think services could be provided during that time as well. Yes, if students get full out services. They do like that, so they're not being pulled out of general education classes as well. Yep. Yep. And they're very popular in that way, and that that was one of the conversations we had last year about. You know what makes a class what makes a block what makes but it it's advantageous to do it during that period and it's also when they have lunch right so opposite your power block is when you're when you're in lunch right. and so even when i meet with the students to prepare for tonight that's during power block you know so yeah. um but there's great opportunities for a lot of different things and i think you know we can continue to build that to its full potential i have a question this is just It technically really shouldn't be just that way, at least not the, per, you know, for the, we do count those minutes as time on learning. And so um, you can be engaged in directed study and some independent study, um, but the old fashioned study hall concept should not be the norm um, because of, you know, what, what its purpose is. But I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's different than I th I think the the goals of of that what you're thinking of, I think we can um successfully do during a revised power block program. Um and I think it's happening now and it has been happening and we can continue to have that. <coughs> I think the study hall maybe that I had in school you know, a lot of times where you might be doing homework, but you might just be sitting around talking, and that's not quite the same. So I think the goals of what you're speaking to, I think, can still be a goal, but it needs to be focused and directed. Um, 
in order to count those minutes. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I know that with, um, I mean, last year there were some students that wanted to talk to <coughs> myself and Dr. Daly about their civil action projects, and that was a time that they said, well, if you can come in during power block, we can meet. And so those students were able to kind of set a meeting and bring, you know, I, I came in and sat down with them a couple of different times. So yeah, I, I think there's a lot of different purposes, and I think I, I appreciate what you say, where like if you, if you have too many things going on, it, it, then you're gonna have kids that are conflicted in there. Right. So you wanna have enough things that you catch most students that they're not just sitting in the library, mm -hmm. or media center, or whatever we call it yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, and so we've, we've talked even about like, is it, you know, how many days per cycle is it? Can you, should you be doing X, Y, or Z, right? So that we're, and we do have minutes to play with too. Mr. LaPrette kind of led the, the mathematics on it of just how many minutes we have how many minutes we need to have for time on learning. And so there is some breathing downtime as well, as long as someone's not choosing all of that at the buffet, right? So you have to, <laughs> and so that's sort of what we're looking at yeah. um, because we, we know how important that is and the dividends that pays as well, so. Does time, does time on learning, broad questions, time on learning have any exceptions or any specific application to different students because like if kids are getting pulled out, I mean, is time on learning just what is offered, even if it's yeah. yeah. And we're not we're not a, we're not reporting it on individuals, but it's more, you know, when we do our reports and we look at you can't count passing time, you can't count lunch or recess, right? right. But we know those things are all very important, <laughs> so you got to have them in there. But then you, for the most of the time, it's that it's a focused part of the day. Yeah. Okay. Well. <clears throat> Normally when people come in, I try to have a few questions, but since it's you, I think you'd probably be, be okay with not many. I'll just say I appreciate the update and the work that's gone into 2025. Thank you. There's no other questions. We'll move on to routine matters. We have an open session from December 11th, and I believe Diana was missing on this one. That's all right. Um, I move to approve the open session minutes of the school committee meeting dated December 11th. 2023 written. I'll second it. We have a motion. We have a second. Diana? Abstain. She abstains. Rich? Aye. Noel? Aye. And I'm an I as well. Passes three to zero. And then we have January 8th, which Rich missed, but he listened to the whole thing, so. After the fact, but yeah. Yes. So, so you can approve or not approve. It's up to you. Uh, Diana, you have a motion? I move to approve the open session. Um, Minutes for the school committee meeting on January 8th, 2024, as written. I'll second. We have a motion, we have a second. Diana? Aye. Rich? Aye. Noel? Aye. Oh, wait, before I approve this, I, I mentioned the note, the only addition was Jeff Simon's name was actually G E O F S I M O N S. So and it's meant as, am, as, amended. as amended. Yeah, yeah. as amended. Yes. So the motion is as amended. We'll just read both. Diana? Aye. Rich? Aye. Noel? Aye. And I'm an I as well. Passes 4 0. Thank you very much. I have a big note that says it and I can't even remember writing. <laughs> um, budget update. Mr. Connolly. Yes, thank you. Uh, so there's no operating <coughs> budget update uh, this meeting. I think we went over that last, at the last meeting. <coughs> I did have two other updates that are in. Um, consistent with um, our policy around recognition of booster and support groups. So there's two organizations that have come forward and submitted um, the application for recognition. They have completed all the um, proper paperwork in terms of setting up and creating bylaws and setting up offices and applying for a, a public charity number with the Attorney General's office. They have their own separate bank account and they have um, established a, a mission and a purpose that I think is um, consistent with what we would like to see and, and collaborate with. And the first organization is the North Reading High School Girls Lacrosse Boosters. Um, so they've they've submitted the, the paperwork, which was also included in the in the document packet. Um, I did reference what their um, their mission uh, is, and essentially, I think they're looking to. To collaborate and work with the North Reading um, School District, North Reading High School, to just better the girls lacrosse program, um, provide additional opportunities to student athletes in the terms of 
financial assistance that um, the, the school budget can't, can't support, um, and they just want to have all of the North Reading High School student athletes be able to access the facilities, the equipment, and training and programs um, that's available and just kind of enhance, enhance what's already been provided. So I certainly thought it was a, a good mission in line with what we've done in the past. Um, <coughs> so I appreciate their, their work kind of following this process, certainly in adherence with our school committee policy. Um, so the, the second request is the North Reading High School um, girls soccer uh, club and they've they've followed I think they've kind of followed a very similar process filled out the very similar paperwork created a similar bylaws a similar mission um, and done all the the same the same areas that are required of them um, so I don't know if you want to take kind of both separately or if there's any particular questions there's a couple of memorandums in the packet with recommended <coughs> motions but I do appreciate the work on some of these parents I did kind of help them appoint them in the right direction uh, some of these parents had reached out to me in the fall, and I, from what I saw, they did a really good job kind of researching the paperwork, completing it, submitting it. So I just really appreciate their effort and their ad adherence to the policy. Okay. I appreciate their effort. I appreciate your effort. I just have two requests or questions. First one is, do you have a list somewhere? And if you do, can you provide us like a list of all the approved boosters? Yeah, so the, I post them on the website. So do you want to go to our website? Sure. Uh, I'm sorry. just curious. And then the, the follow-up question on this is, I believe there's a soccer booster club. So at, yeah, as, the, as you guys approve them, I, I post them on the website. But are they, the soccer the lacrosse, program. were they gender specific before? Were they, were they was it a boy dish. soccer one before? It's a booster thing under the, was that was it a boys soccer one before or just a general soccer and now is it there was a boys it was a boys okay. soccer it was specific to boys and same yes. way across okay that's just what I was going to talk about. so these are the two pending are the ones that are quickly he got that for you I look at that <laughs> the two pending are the ones pending tonight okay perfect um, but we just recently did baseball we recently did the boys soccer we recently we did cheerleading about a year ago um, we have a hockey booster club even though it's a combined team uh, for the girls? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> I just wasn't sure if they, if there was just a general soccer one before and then it was, it was a boy soccer and it was a girl soccer. Correct. Okay. That's all I had. Any other questions? No. I, I make some motions. I think it's a good, uh, a good policy we have in place and. Yeah. I think we should do them separate. Yeah. yeah. I can read it if, uh. That's all right. Yeah. Uh, I recommend, uh, I move that the uh, committee vote, uh, that in adherence to the school committee policy, LEC, that the committee vote to recognize the uh, North Reading girls, sorry, I, I'm not scrolling here for some reason. Um, North Reading girls, uh, high school girls lacrosse boosters uh, uh, program. I'm sorry, my <laughs> computer is like not letting me scroll in any co coherent way. As a support group and authorize the school administration to work collaboratively, collaboratively with for the betterment of the North Reading Public Schools. Sorry, that's a handful of motion. Okay. <laughs> we have a motion. Second. We have a second. Rich. Aye. Diana. Aye. Noel. Aye. And I'm an eye as well. Passes 4 0. And I move that uh, in adherence to school committee policy, LEC, the North Reading Com School Committee vote to recognize. The North Reading Girls Soccer Boosters Club uh, as a support group and authorized school administration to work collaboratively with for the betterment of the North Reading Public Schools. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Rich. Aye. Diana. Aye. Noel. Aye. I'm an aye as well. Passes 4 0. Thank you very much. And Mr. Colley, before we move on, just real quick on the budget for this year, um, you, uh, you showed me the other day when we were just meeting. Um, are you going to are you planning to share that out with the committee soon and when are we going to get budget books just curious so we're that. moving on this the, the similar timeline <coughs> so we would the budget books are due to be released the friday before february break okay so i think that's like february 15th 16th time frame the and then the presentation is the first week in march and for the summary i'm just thinking because we're probably going to be presenting 
something at the next finance planning team meeting, yes. which is February 5th or 6th. Mm -hmm. So it'd be nice if we could kind of distribute that to everybody just to be on the same page and get any thoughts before. I, I can do that, yeah. I just, would, the one, just the one page, the two sure, pages yeah. or whatever, just to kind of. Sort of like a v, just an email, like this is. Yeah, I just say like this is what we're working on or whatever, just sure. so that everybody can see it. And, <laughs> so we and we're also in the middle of negotiating contracts and everything else. I just think it would be relevant for everybody to have the same information yeah. at the same time. So. Okay. Thank you. you. do that. If you don't mind that. Um, okay. The only other thing I just want to update the committee on when we're under budget, that, is that okay? Just, yeah, go ahead. I just want everyone to know that we are, I don't think I made it clear. We are up to bid this year for the food service contract. Yeah. Um, so that's an every five year process for us. So it came, it came pretty quickly. So we are, I'm in the process and the DESE over the last couple of years has really kind of taken that um, control over that process. They've now, there's now a set state approved template that we have to use, RFP approved template. Um, so when the previously districts had kind of created their own language, their own RFP and gone out, um, the state had done a lot of procurement audits of districts in this process. And one of the things that came out of them was just, there was a, there was a lot of required language that's required to go in these contracts. So they just, they've now have sort of a set template that districts need to use. There's some flexibility that we obviously have in terms of the, the evaluating criteria that we want to kind of weigh the RFPs before we get to pricing and so forth. So um, I'm in that, they posted the RFP template. They were a little bit behind in doing that. Um, last week, we have until February 1st to get it approved. So I'm working on that. So I, I expect that that will be released, advertised in the paper and released on the website and advertised appropriately in, around the beginning of February, maybe a little bit after that. And we would be opening those bids like the beginning of March um, and we would have a committee involved in reviewing those, but I just, I want, that is going on as well. Just want everyone to be just, aware. Uh, two questions. I mean, number one, do, do you remember how many bids did we, did we get last time? Just We've consistently gotten three bids okay. um, along with the, obviously the incumbent Chartwells has bid. We've gotten um, two other vendors. It's changed a little bit who it's been, but we've, we've gotten three bids each time. Okay. And, and um, if you, and in terms of the timeline, if you need a school committee rep, so we don't need that in the past we've done it but we it's recommended that you have three or four four folks on the committee um, so typically it's myself um, sometimes a staff member sometimes a it could be a school committee member if you, someone should choose to want that it's been a, I usually get a building principal to do it that's close to it um, whatever you that's kind of how we've yeah. done it whatever you, yeah, whatever you need yeah. if, you, if you'd like somebody right. we're happy to be part of it if you if not, we trust you completely, so. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it, it might be something I actually have some expertise in. Yeah. <laughs> Food. <laughs> and, then, and then actually the bus, I mean, will we have to, for the, like we had met the other day. Yeah, we, we should formally that. vote that. We should vote that. Should we put that on just to vote for, because Diane and I met when we get into the updates or whatever, we met because one of our goals for this year was to look at the bus contract. And I think we were in agreement that looking at some of the neighboring districts it made sense to just take the option year that's available to us. And so I think we are going to bring that to the committee at some point. Okay. So yeah. I just don't know when you have to elect that, but I want to make sure that. Yeah, it was a March 1 deadline okay. of notifying the vendor. So we should do that in an upcoming meeting, February. Certainly. Just in case, because you never know if there's going to be a snow that cancels the meeting. So, mm -hmm. right. Probably good to get that on soon. Okay. Staffing? None at this time. Bids and donations? None at this time. Grants? None at this time. Overnight, overnight trip requests. <laughs> None at this time. Um, subcommittee updates, CIPC map. Jeff finally made it on the agenda and went in here to give an update. Right. So, um, actually, you were going to talk, Michael. Do you wanna, is there anything that came from the CIPC you want to um, update about? Here? Yeah, we had a good meeting. Um, I think we're at the stage where we've, got, we've heard from all the departments, so we kind of finalized the presentations from um, the major departments have made their presentations. On this particular meeting on January 10th, we reviewed the, the list of our requests for all the departments. There were some s modifications to some of the amounts based on new information that came forward. Um, so we reviewed those, make sure we made sure the list was completely up to date. Um, for example, a couple of hours had changed from the presentation. So we are now asking for phase one of the 
hood school roof would be a two hundred thousand dollar request. Okay. Um, that was another question. And then we had revised based on updated quotes of the instructional technology smart boards at the middle school and the high school from one fifty to two hundred thousand. Is it two hundred an increase of what we were requested before? We requested one fifty, so now we're at two hundred. So it's a fifty thousand dollar increase for that request, and then it's we actually requested four hundred for the roof. And the amendment that's going to be voted on at special town meeting to change the capital budget that was last year's and if that's approved is that money that's already there and so yeah it won't, it won't impact it assuming it passes a special town meeting it won't impact correct, correct. anything if it doesn't yep. pass could it impact this year's or is that still money they've kind of set aside already that's you know? money they've set aside okay. yeah it shouldn't have an impact won't have an impact on it. Okay. um it's a good question okay. we did we did talk about those requests actually as a committee um up the upcoming upcoming town meeting and um at at this stage all the committee members have the ranking sheets with the revised amounts and we have until february 1st um to submit those to the the chair mr kelleher and then on february 6th we'll meet and we'll review and we'll see where the ranking is at has there been any discussion this year about changing the ranking system and how it works or not <laughs> Um, not a lot. No, no, it hasn't been. Oh, I won't go further than that. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Finance planning team met on January 12th. Mr. McGowan and I were both there with Mr. Connelly and Dr. Daly. Rich, you want to give an update? Yeah. So we um, had a spirited discussion about various topics. Uh, talked about the special town meeting, um, and as always, you know, who do we think will come? How many people do you think we can get? Um, but everyone is, I think, well, I, I shouldn't characterize everyone's opinion. Uh, but, you know, I think that that was a, uh, the first topic. Uh, I talked briefly about wastewater update. I don't think there was anything sub substantive there. Um, and then got into um, this year's revenue and next year's revenue expense plan. And that news continues to be pretty... Uh, it's certainly not getting better, that's for sure. Um, so we're to continue to look at what will be a challenging uh, environment for the for this upcoming budget season. Um, talked about what we've talked about before about doing, uh, you know, requesting uh, 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 an override to help fund the budget, uh, especially the most important needs over the next five years. The uh, town did come with a list of um, uh, priority items that uh, similar to our list that we've talked about, uh, which is great that they did that work. Uh, it's a very it's a preliminary list, but there's a lot of good things on there, including uh, as similar to what we did. You know, the idea of possibly looking at a couple of fees to reduce uh, as we you know raise taxes on if if we end up raising taxes on the on for, for the uh, taxpayers. Uh, so you know, I think that process. Moving forward, we push to get another meeting in beginning this next month so that we don't let this process die. They, they understandably want to get past this t special town meeting. Um, but yeah, so we're meeting again uh, early February and we'll see where we go. Good update. Rich was very fired up on this meeting, so it was nice <laughs> to see. Um, <laughs> Athletic subcommittee, since I'm not on it, I guess I won't give that update. Well, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> it's about well. Or the fine arts. <laughs> I. I have the agenda in front of me. I have to say, like, it was super difficult to hear yeah. in that meeting. So I feel like I Sorry caught <laughs> some of it, but not a lot of it. Um, Same. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I know they gave a winter sports update, and what I heard was that, like, the teams were pretty steady state from the past, but there was one team in particular that might have been low, and I couldn't hear exactly which one that was. I don't remember. Yeah. Oh. Um, we fixed our technology now. That was, yeah. I think the room was disassembled and now it's back together. So, um, <laughs> are you usually that. in person or are you always virtual on these? Lately, I've had to be Does virtual, but. But are some people in person? Yeah. Okay. The, yeah. The, the two, yeah. you two were remote, and so the people in the room were. I didn't have an owl set up, so it just was picking up my computer. So, yeah. Yeah. sorry about that. Oh no, that's okay. You could feel. I, I could have got up and set it up. It would have just taken a oh, okay. few minutes. So next time it'll be ready. I know there were some letters that went out about the um, postseason stipend. Um, I didn't hear more beyond that, but I know that there was some communication and yeah. some decisions yeah, made. There was there. no issues. We're continuing to talk about that. Um, it's just a you know a 
a process that needs a little bit of attention moving forward. And it's going to, um, you know, we can address it with the union through negotiations and through discussion. So, yep. And other than that, I know there was a discussion around that fifty thousand dollar grant yes. that would be mainly allocated or pretty much allocated to baseball. Right. Big, big but I don't know. I didn't hear the details on. I don't think you have a hundred percent determined the usage of it. Yet. No, we're still in sort of a research phase. But we there is a fifty thousand dollar gift that came in, particularly kind of geared towards the baseball program. Um, I think we accepted that a while back. Yep. So there is, um, and I know Mr. Johnson with Coach Oshmo Ball has been in communication. They're, they're just trying to find the right, the right fit for that. Um, some of the initial proposals, the next, what we really want to do is create some nice seating now to kind of complete that, that area and that project because with the netting, the safety netting looks great. We want to upgrade the, the bleacher kind of viewing area. Um, the initial proposals is just a lot higher than that fifty thousand dollars, so now we're just we're just trying to find the right solution to to work within the budget and the funds that are there. So, it, it, I think they recognize it's probably not going to happen for this spring, but they're they're still working with some vendors on that. Is that anything that could be done with the vocational schools, like bleachers or anything like that? Yeah, I, it's, that's a little bit, especially yeah. the talking about big concrete pads. Or, yeah, uh, yeah. The idea is to pour looking. some concrete pads and just have a better whether it be a wraparound bleaching kind of behind the backstop now that you can kind of safely sit behind there. Um, yeah, it's kind of the initial sort of wish list was just something that looked awesome and kind of wrapped around, but it was just hundred, you know, three times. Maybe, what we have just for funding. all of some of the stuff. I don't yeah, know. Maybe. I don't know. There was some discussion around just the entrance area to where you come over there by the, where tickets are collected streamlined. coming into the football. Yep. Yeah. That, I was thinking could be a potential vocation, you know, just to help us think it through oh, yeah, and what could yeah. be done with some shrubs or some temporary fencing. So there's some possibilities there. And then we also discussed um, a partial lighting of the um, outfield, not for baseball, but for the use of um, soccer, football, um, practice field area. So we got an updated quote for that area that we talked about. Yeah, so that, that that's an interesting project. It, it will it would ultimately be a capital project if we decide to go forward. But the idea being that for now, can we get some enough lighting in there to so good serve as a practice field? Because obviously in the fall it gets dark pretty quickly. It gets dark uh, late enough that it, or early enough that it becomes difficult to have practices there. <laughs> we know in town there's a, just a general need for the more fields. So maybe a couple of light poles, light uh, uh, installations would be enough to just for practices, but also sort of plan ahead to potentially have it, uh, you know, an another two poles or whatever is required to make it more useful for actually games. But that's, mm -hmm. it's all preliminary at this point. So on athletics real quick, with the new turf, any issues in the fall with the new turf or good? That was great. There was a couple of um, spots that needed repair was instantly under warranty everything fixed up and looks great okay. uh, we're going to send out some reminders about you really you shouldn't be shoveling the field you shouldn't you know there's some pieces like that that we're going to make sure are communicated out but um everyone's very happy so far with the project and, and it's been years since it start, started but like with tennis courts i mean is that are they still getting use at night with lighting and everything right now tennis courts i mean w and up until they go up until fall. around thanksgiving yeah. um, and then the nets come down and then they'll be right back. Oh, the nets go down. Okay. okay. Yeah, we take the nets in um, okay. around around that time. But we, we have programs that go right up. I mean, we yeah, have people out there. I remember there. being coming outside. And yeah. They were yeah, we had good weather too yeah. this year, right up until then. So uh, not right now though. <laughs> it's too, I would say the lighting <laughs> system works for the community. Yeah. They can kind of turn it on, and then it sort of yeah. flashes when it's about to go off. Yeah. The town of timing system. Yeah, that's not, that's a good set, but, setup. Mm. And I could go into the golf cart discussion, but you know, we'll leave that. Yeah. <laughs> was there, am I just, maybe I'm hallucinating, but like, wasn't there a fire? Was there a fire in like the, the bathroom or down there before? And was that all fixed? As yeah, that's all been that? fixed under the insurance claim. Okay. There was a, there was a fire about a year ago. It, it was a year ago. Okay. Yeah. I, just, I never, never found an update. Like everything was all repaired and everything was all good. Okay. Yeah. Um, <coughs> Fine art subcommittee. It's again, Mr. McGowan and Ms. Robuff, I apologize. Well. I will fix that. Not well, Buckley uh, sound very similar. Mm -hmm. I, um, I, do you want me to do this? I, yeah, if you've got notes, go ahead. Um, let's see. Um, there was the big news with the update that 
um, we were finally able to get the updated or the correct designs um, for um, planning the um, improvement, um, the sound improvement for the for the pack that we've been waiting for. Um, what I understood from the conversation is that um, the um, now that's been shared on with the North Reading building inspector. So we're waiting for his approval to be able to move ahead with the next steps on sound. Um, is that correct, Dr. Daly? Does that sound right? That is my understanding. That is so my great, understanding. Great, great so a great, there. great development there. I appreciate uh, Brad Dorr from Doran Whittier, who took some time to dig deep, find some of the drawings we needed. And when I met with Ms. Kane, she and Mr. Campagna have been working and said they're finally seeing some things that they haven't been able to find um, to get some of the specs for the proscenium that they needed. So now the next steps are working together with the building inspector to um, get everything in place so we can hang those speakers. Any idea on time frame or um, for the spring show or not? Oh, that's our goal. Yeah, ASAP. So um, we are we are working on that. I appreciate everyone's continuing. That's it's the kind of thing you just need to keep pushing to get it yeah. done. So I, I think yeah, they were great, and, and Mr. Redloff also helped us yep. uh, as well. well say, which is great. Noel, you can you can uh, provide the proper credit if you need to. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. thanks all around for that. There's still a few things that we need. We still have some questions around the projection screen, right? Um, and some additional things that we need, but we're taking everything we can and and kind of uh, very excitedly moving forward with that. So. It's the, it's, yeah, it's the Arts Cultural Vitality Index Grant. So similar to what we did last year, we're going to continue forward with another round of um, doing a self-study on how we are incorporating the new frameworks into the district and also through sort of an equity lens, making sure all students have access to, to arts and different what kind of arts offerings are available to all students. And I thought that was the uh, one of the coolest part of the things we learned, Dr. Daly. That was part. That's is is that a school? Uh, I know there's internship is a, is a, is a class, right? Is, is that that? I believe. Yeah, I believe that it's the the cooperative learning experience. We we usually outplace students, right? Um, but there wasn't something in this area, and so we did it sort of internal. We've done that a few times for different placements. So he's learning how to basically run. Our programs, um, yeah, so so sort of, so. sort of learning about being a manager of the facility, right? Of someone exactly. who can who can run the various um, uh, uh, parts of the facility, whether it be the sound or the or the lighting <coughs> thing for groups that might come in, that kind of thing. Yeah, and then Very also good. the PR side, as as you mentioned. Yep, and the PR side. Yeah. Well, uh, and fine arts, real two quick things. I, number one, just when you're thinking that, it was kind of interesting. I just know from the uh, middle school musical, there's a student who was performing in a Christmas carol at North Shore Music Theater. Oh. So he wasn't able to do the middle school production, but he's an assistant producer, so, or assistant director. So I know, I appreciate Ms. Lister gave, you know, wanted to keep him involved in it, but I don't yeah. think he can make all the practice time, but so he is an assistant director to oh, great. still be involved. And then the only question was, the middle school concert was so well attended I know they had to shift and move students out of the seats and everything. Was that ever discussed at the Fine Arts Subcommittee? I'm just wondering if that's like the new norm because 
Again, the, the great thing about it right now is there's so much participation that there's so many more parents there yeah. where, you know, Mr. Guberto and I were literally in the back, standing up in the back together. And I, I, I don't know if, like, it's sustainable long term in that st same facility with that many students or... Yeah. We debriefed a little bit. I, I believe once we moved the students out, everyone had a seat. Yes, I think so. Um, at the beginning of that, you had sort of all of the performers sitting in the audience, and then we very quickly realized that wasn't going to. So I came down, but they were already on their way yep. to sort of move people. But that was quite a, uh, yeah. quite a night. <laughs> Two-hour concert. Was hey, yeah. I was just wondering, because like, if, if, if enrollment – if the number of participants continues to rise and, and we keep more students from fifth to sixth and keep more, more than that, like from sixth to seventh to seventh to eighth, yeah. it might be something where we have to think about like having tickets that there's already assigned yeah. seating or. Yeah, we've had to do the, the assigned tickets or minimum, you know, for different events. Right. I, that's always, like we have to do that with all town for different things. And right. um, it's great to be able to bring a grandparent or an aunt and uncle to, right. you know, siblings. Right. So, yeah, I think really it's hard, but having to rotate those kids out so that, you know, and that's what we shifted to, but we'll try to be proactive with that now that we've seen those numbers. And you keep adding a cappella group, and, you know, there, there's right. four different bands now, and so, yeah. but it was quite a show. I mean, at some point you max out on the number. Yeah. At some point you max out on the number of kids involved because yeah. there's only so, so yeah. many kids. Or, so or, hopefully, hopefully that le levels yeah. out so that everybody fits. Or you could do is you could. I mean, if you needed to, you could split it up and do like sixth grade separate from seventh and eighth or something. Like if you needed to it. But again, I think it was fine this year. I just wondered if it was yep. discussed afterwards at all. So yeah, we always debrief with yeah. Miss Lister. Noel, were you saying something? <laughs> Noel, did you have something else? Um, did I mean, you know, um, you sort of, I mean, just quickly that the um, upcoming we still have the next Hills the musical, um, and the and Notorious is um, competing um, in the second week of February. Um, also, there had been an issue with the payment, um, the payment link for um, activities that's been resolved. Um, and our next meeting is in March. Okay, thank you very much, Noel. Thanks, Noel. Evaluation of the subcommittee. She's got a few. You want, you want to keep going on that, Noel? <laughs> I will. I'll do my best this morning. I can't find my notes. Um, so, I don't take um, notes, so just evaluate. The evaluation, um, we, we kind of bounced the idea back and forth. Should we be waiting on, when should we do our own evaluation? Should we wait until the end of the school year? Should we do it until June? It's a great question. Any thoughts, thoughts on it? We I mean, did, I'll just say we discussed pot, you know, putting it on the agenda at least to get an update. And then yeah, yeah. The, the question of like, what are they going to send out? Is it going to be the forms with the written feedback or is it more of a discussion? So. Well, I think, I, I guess my thought would be we have two, when we do the evaluation, we have two different pieces in there. We have whether the goals were accomplished, and then we have the overall rating. So potentially we could split those two up and do the rating of us like as a committee separate from the goals updates, because yeah. I think a lot of the goals updates go through the end of the year, and you might need the time for that. But the rating of like how we're doing as a committee, like I don't think that's as specific to the goals projects. And so I would think maybe you could do it that way, where you just do kind of like how the committee's functioning as a group, as a separate thing, and then... And do that one in April. Yeah, do that one before the election, and then do, you know, and kind of finalize at the end of the school year, you know, even in the early summer, kind of wrap up the goals update, and... I think that makes sense. Yeah, I, I, think, I think doing something before the election makes sense, and, and you're right that those two things are really not the same, and, and, and yeah, the rating thing is probably the one to do. <coughs> 
there's our thoughts, Noel. <laughs> That's very helpful. Um, and then policy subcommittee, uh, policy subcommittee as well. Did we lose you, Noel? We can't hear you, Noel. I keep taking my phone off because I'm coughing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, this is the one I can't find my notes on. So, Dr. Um, Daly, maybe. Sure. But um, we, went, we covered, we went through a lot. Um, and I think there wasn't, there wasn't anything very revolutionary that we didn't talk, talk about. No, no big um, sticking point. But um, do you have the, I just don't have it. Sure. No, I can share. I, I mentioned this a little bit earlier. We're mm -hmm. going to be, Next meeting, we'll do a first reading of about, there's about 10 um, or so, so we might break them up depending on the agendas and what they look like. There's a few related to food service. The rest of them are all related around digital learning and um, policy, privacy, how we're using our tools. Um, and then after that, there's a series that we're gonna be looking at that are fiscal related, some that we've had for some time that we haven't got to. Is sort of a backlog, so we're we've got some work ahead for the policy subcommittee, but um, those are the those will be upcoming. Yep. They're, they're related, so we might <coughs> package them together and, and go through them. I don't think there's going to be a ton of deliberation, um, unlike our you know animals policy that I think we <laughs> deliberated one policy for eight meetings. So um, <laughs> hopefully these will go pretty quickly. But it was uh, <coughs> so we have s several meetings scheduled. Okay. To, keep, to keep ahead of this group. We always go through when we get the updates from the MASC group, the subcommittee reviews sort of the recommendations and we compare it against our current policies and what we have. And this is a time when some of these policies, we, we didn't even have one in place and we felt that we probably should, so. Okay, thank you very much. Subcommittee schedule, finance planning team is meeting February 5th at 8.15 a.m. Just to note, we are in person on that one again. We've kind of been pushing to get them in person. We think it's you know, more progress can be made. Athletic subcommittee meeting March 5th at noon. Fine arts subcommittee meeting the same day at 315. And those are those are March, yes? Not to March? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Policy subcommittee February 20th and March 12th, both at 1 p.m. Evaluation subcommittee the same days uh, at 1.30 p.m. A half hour meeting? Wouldn't that be nice? I'm just kidding. Uh, CIPC scheduled to meet February 6th at 8.15. Administrative report, Dr. Daly. So I'll just share quickly as um, just a few updates. Uh, I've, I've shared about our Project 351, um, which is going to be on January 24th at the middle school. We also are scheduling our um, larger group uh, workshops on February 7th and 14th. Um, as I was here tonight, the 14th may change a little bit based on some availability, but we're very close to having those um, large group assemblies at middle school and high school scheduled. So two different related purposes here. One is a real focus, small group, intense training, train the trainer, trainer of leaders. And then the larger group is more of getting that and disseminating that message to the whole student body um, that are coming up in February. School safety update, just wanted to share what was shared out. This week we will be reviewing our ALICE protocols with all students grades um, K to 12. These are scenarios. They're gonna be differentiated. Um, at the, the younger levels, they may talk about, you know, a stranger's in the building, what should we do? How can we be safe? At the upper levels, it may be more specific. Um, we kept the scenarios very similar to what we did last year because we said that all the other variables are gonna be different. The kids are older, different group of kids, different classroom, different time of day. We, we're not disclosing exactly what time of day it is because we, we want people to realize that an emergency can happen at any moment, like a fire drill. Um, and then there's the most important part, obviously, is the debrief, the collection of questions from staff and students that we share out. So any parents that have questions or concerns can reach out to the principals. Um, and that information has been shared with, uh, with families as well. And so we shared, you know, for anyone that wants to do a little pre-teaching at home about violence, talking with kids about it, um, that resource was shared as well. So we wanted people to know it was coming, but we didn't want, you know, the exact moment. 
So if someone did need to opt out for some reason, they could have that discussion with the principals. But we're very aware of the trauma that can happen from drills. We're not doing any kind of simulations with gunshots or noises or alarms. It's a scenario-based discussion. And so hopefully, with the proper supports, everyone will be able to participate. Finally, just as Mr. Um, Buckley has alluded to, the James and the Giant Peach is on sale. We sent out a few reminders starting February 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Um, really excited for this, uh, for this production. So that is, up. that is all that I have for my update. Uh, any correspondence? None at this time other than the um, items I share with you, okay. calendars and things like that. Um, future business, we have, we're going to be at a special town meeting on Tuesday, January 30th at 6.45 p.m., and then Monday and February 12th and February 26th, we have meetings at 6.30 each. That's it. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I so move. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Rich. Aye. Diana. Aye. Noel. Aye. I'm an aye as well. Passes 4-0. Feel better, Noel. Feel better. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.